Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry, a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, a popular video has come across my feed and the topic sounds like something I'd be interested in. So we're gonna do it. All right, this video is by a channel I've never heard of before called Kurzgesagt in a nutshell. It's got 21 million subscribers. And in this first seven days, it has 4 million views. I don't know what's going on. And I have no idea what to expect. Let's see if we can tie some history up in this. And of course, let me know what you think. All right, original video link is down below. You can support it down there. Let's check this out. All right, the first clip here, first uh, frame here looks like, is this like uh, like, a, like, a, like a POV video? Am I, am I the, the person? Am I gonna start the war? Like what? Okay, I'll shut up and let's go. Mr. President, nuclear missiles will Wait, strike I'm our country in 14 minutes. I know it's your first day in office, so I'm going to walk you through it, but you're the only one who can authorize our nuclear retaliation in response, and you've only got a few minutes to make a decision. Yes, sir. As you know, tensions have got escalated it. rapidly in the past few days. Oh, Today's Wait, who are we? Who, wait, who's our enemies? As you know, tensions have escalated rapidly in the past few days. Oh my god, the Turanian Union and the Duckest Empire. Oh. Today's the joint allied aerial defense exercise began just minutes before we detected the launch. Oh, A simple misunderstanding, maybe. We assume the sudden attack is meant to neutralize as many of our nuclear forces as possible. Oh, snap. But that doesn't matter now. Missiles are in the air, and we can't shoot all of them down. Why? Because intercontinental ballistic missiles yeah. are basically rockets launched into space right. before re entering the atmosphere over their target and releasing many different send the fighters higher and faster than anything you can send after them. And act activate the Iron Dome. We've got protocol for this. If I'd been a horrible president and haven't been prepared for this, were those the, 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 the duckists? What am I watching? To get you to the bunker. <laughs> really? Oh god, we're in a bunker called Bones. Here's what we got. Share like a VR Four helmet ago, on. Our new infrared monitoring satellites detected 112 bursts consistent with god, ICBM launches from the enemy's inner territories. We're screwed. For some reason, only 20 of their 80 underground nuclear silos seem to have fired, so we suspect most of them were transporter erector launchers. You know, trucks with big missiles on them. Oh, it's gosh. unclear why they didn't use all their silos. I saw those in like Soviet uh parade videos there by the way this scenario of thinking there was you know tests but taking them seriously that was a real thing back in the cold war that would happen sometimes and there was a, a an instance or two where like they were about to do it i forget the one the one guy who uh i forgot his name that like the other people in charge of making that decision were about to uh like they had confirmed like okay we'll like get ready for to launch our missiles and there was one guy that was reluctant and then he found out it wasn't for real guy saved our life i feel like did i cover that in a video maybe i just watched it but it was they an interesting story we, it, it was very possible that nukes could have been launched starting a world war three after more than 30 years or they might be keeping them in reserve the fog of war is keeping many things up clear Aerospace Command thinks the ICBMs are targeting our nuclear command centers, silos, we don't and have time major to talk about and navy bases, ending this war before we have a chance to act. The enemy's strategic doctrine prioritizes military targets and our nuclear weapon systems, but their secondary targets are our industry I'm and infrastructure, all refineries, power stations, and deep water ports, all located near or in major population oh, centers. Gosh. We won't know the exact casualty count for a You're few all on weeks. Your own. Deaths from I'll the blast the and burns may be a few million today. It's morning rush hour, and there's not much to be done for people stuck mm. in traffic. People in major metro areas can't really evacuate. What we'll happened with the Hiroshima bombs? All right in the morning. Evacuate, but emergency broadcasts are being sent out to shelter in place and away from windows. That'll Radiation help. exposure for intact These population centers drills. is highly dependent on the weather over the next week. We might be looking at dozens of millions of deaths by the end of the month. For the next few minutes, we can still respond. But you need to decide. We've Looks got 1,500 water across options, our silos, then? bombers, and submarines. The 400 in silos need to be launched now before they get taken out. 46 nuclear capable bombers on high alert can be ready to take off in two minutes. Okay, hold on. Bombing them isn't going to help protect us. This is mutually assured destruction. There was a name for this. We got to get a way to stop those missiles. We got to intercept those missiles. The 
we need to Then we can deal with the next step if we have to retaliate. The order right away to get them out of the blast radius if you want to consider using them. Of our 40 nuclear submarines, five are presently at sea. While they're submerged, they're undetectable. So that's our backup for a nuclear retaliation if we lose our silos and bombers. We could try to use them to bomb out their remaining silo fields Won't matter. before We're they all can dead. launch them. The sooner you commit to it, the better the chance we have of preventing a further exchange Do I get to make an actual choice? Updates. We have radar confirmation that the enemy ICBMs have completed their burn and deployed their warheads. Our best guess is that each missile will deploy at least six re-entry vehicles, about 600 in total, which is the part that carries a warhead so back into the atmosphere during its terminal descent onto the target. And with many more decoys on top of that, inflatable balloons meant to waste any anti-missiles. Hey, they used those in World War II. Uh, those uh, those balloons, what uh, uh, crap, what, what are they called? What are they called? What are they called? I know, I know it. Ah, I forgot, let me know. What are the, the balloons called to mess up planes? We're now tracking I'll, I'll, nearly 4,000 potential targets. Our anti-ballistic missiles have been launched and will begin their intercept in another minute. We'll do our best to protect the capital, although there really is no defense. Where's our Iron Wait, Dome? Confirming a partial radar Israel has blackout. one? Our systems seem to be glitchy. The enemy must have anticipated oh, no. we launch our interceptors and pre-detonated a few warheads at high altitude. Hacker man. That ionizes the atmosphere and creates radar interference. Oh, no. Our interceptors should still operate okay. They've had a 55% success yeah. rate in tests, but never with this many decoys or with radar interference this intense. We might shoot EMP, down 50 objects, the but there's no guarantee they're warheads. It looks like most bombs are going to get through. This is our last chance to counterattack. We're out of time. Okay. Our silo launch sequence takes five minutes. We have to transmit and confirm a launch order, and the missile needs time to clear the blast radius of the incoming bomb. We were taking this is a lot to take in, but the war plan is made. You just need to enter the launch authorization codes and push this button to transmit them. You can't do anything else to save more of our people. If you don't launch now, then this war will be over before it even begins. You understand, this is our one chance, right? The effect. Enemy civilian casualties are hard to estimate, but should be similar to ours. A Why are you still talking? Right away, We're gonna die! Perhaps a few tens of million by the end of the month. The total fallout from their attacks and ours might trigger a nuclear winter, potentially yeah, we're screwed no matter what. World, but that might happen even if we don't retaliate. See, in all reality, in this kind of attack, you have like hundreds of nukes that have been launched. Probably not going to intercept them all. And how many need to get through to be catastrophic? Not very many, right? I'm sure you 1 have questions, of thousands. but you have to give orders without expecting answers right now. It's still going to ruin. With an attack of this scale, there's no guarantee communications or assets will be intact in a few minutes. We're out of time. We need a decision, sir. What is this like an AI channel? Like, is this has like, this was not made by a human. I feel like this video and the pacing and the dialogue and all this is like, have it, has it just become totally self-aware? Did AI adapt that quick? It's just self-aware now. Can <laughs> we launch? It's me. Nuclear wars aren't regular wars. They only last minutes, and in times of crisis, small conflicts can rapidly spiral out Push of the control. Button. Anything from small communication lags to sensor errors to just uncertainty in the fog of war mean that no leader will ever have a complete idea of what's happening as a crisis unfolds. Oh, dear. When tensions are high, accidents or misunderstandings can steer leaders, even those with good intentions, oh, yeah. to launch a nuclear attack. It almost happened multiple times. It's almost happened before. Are nukes making the world safe? I did a poll question of that a few weeks ago. And people were very, uh, it seemed like they were very... Hmm, reluctant to be fully committed to that. But the problem is, yeah, well, you you can intimidate each other to not wanting to war because, you know, you don't want to uh, attack a new, uh, you know, a, a, a country with um with nukes. But at the same time, um, it only takes the you know decision of a very small few of people to, you know, be able to to launch those. Right. And it takes one bad decision to make a bad decision to the last decision you'll ever make. Confused and with incomplete information, a single person, yes, it's really just one single person who decides, can literally make civilization ending yeah. decisions, killing hundreds Not of millions always. of people in the time it takes to watch a YouTube video. This story is fiction, but the world came very close to this several times. 
1995, Russian radar detected a submarine launch missile, and the yep. nuclear forces went on full alert. Okay, except they are it was actually a scientific rocket to study auroras. Okay. In 1979, U.S. computers reported a full-scale Soviet attack with only minutes to respond, except it was a training tape being incorrectly loaded into a computer. <laughs> In 1983, I can't remember which because yeah, I knew this happened multiple times. The one I was talking about, where it was like everyone had they'd seen it was a, it was either whether it was a malfunction of radar or something, or just bad intelligence, or there was a training exercise that they forgot. Oh wait, I think it was that one where there was supposed to be a a, a training exercise by the United States where uh, they forgot to tell the Soviets that it was a training exercise. Like I, I hope someone got fired for that, and that was the one I think where. Um, how, I forget how many people had to had to like approve the use of the like a retaliation attack, and it was like one guy that was holding out, and that guy saved a lot of people. The Soviet satellite alert system showed five ICBMs launched from the U.S., but it was a false alarm caused by sunlight reflected on clouds. Yeah. Yeah, this reliance, this reliance on technology for something that could end life as we know it, is frightening isn't it like one technical malfunction could be the end of the seriously the life on this planet crisis a soviet That's submarine with no contact to moscow for several days concluded that nuclear war had begun and decided to launch a nuclear torpedo luckily the authorization of three this officers was, was required okay. one yep. of them vasily Arshipov, opposed it two of the three but what if he hadn't any safeguard can fail no matter how carefully designed it might be and decisions are being made right now to build new weapons and missile systems that commit the world to another century of nuclear stalemate, complicated further by China's emergence as a new nuclear superpower. Simply accepting that the existence of nuclear weapons is inevitable might mean their use is inevitable. But the uh, world I mean, I again, I did poll questions of this. Let me know down below what you think about that. The whole nukes situation. Are they making the world safer or have we ensured something that could potentially lead to global destruction at its worst case. What do you think is more likely that they'll never be used or that it will be? Doesn't have I mean, to be this up. way. Even incremental steps taking apart one bomb at a time will eventually result in a world with none. During the Cold War, the world had over 70,000 nuclear weapons. And that's... Through arms reduction treaties, that yeah. number is now about 12,500. And then in the 60s stuff, they finally understand that even having, you know, testing these is going to destroy the planet. So um, you got to ban atmospheric testing and in space, you don't want that. And of course, underwater as well. So you had to do underground testing. Even that's got to have consequences. Progress is not guaranteed, but it's also it's not again. impossible. Governments and militaries are not separate from their nations. They're part of them, just like you. You have the power to make demands of your leaders, and often this it's begins with just being aware of an issue. If you want to learn more, we've compiled a number of resources for you in the video description and our sources. Here's some, here's some more sources to keep you this from video crapping was your supported by open every night. Night. Did you know that there are countless more Kotskazar videos that we upload on TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and Instagram Reels? Bite-sized information, animated facts, and start getting out more shorts, by the way. After all, you will see videos you can watch quickly in a bathroom break. The fun and stuff, more in-depth videos like are happening here on YouTube. Short form is a completely different challenge that we're trying to do as well as possible. Check them out if you're curious. And if you want to discuss and share your thoughts about science with other like-minded people, why don't you check is out our this Discord community channel? with over 80,000 verbs. We have channels where you can chat about STEM topics, participate in events, and the too, academic like question us. of the week. And we have Break the best send, uh, video suggestions. After all, we want to spark your curiosity, but it's always more fun to be curious together. See you over there. Yeah. All right, final thoughts. All right, some questions first. Is this what this channel is like? I, I, I felt like the first part until they started giving those historical examples was so weird. <laughs> like it was so weird. That's where I was like, is this an AI? Did a human brain like make this? <laughs> it was wild, but man, 21 million subs and how many, I forget how many million views this has. It's, you know, seven days, yeah, 4 million views. So is this like a, I mean, I would say a cult following thing, but like the numbers are way too high. Maybe I've just been missing this. I, I got to, there's apparently a lot I've got to learn. Um, This is, if there's more, hist especially history related stuff, you'd like me to check out, let me know. Let me know if there is stuff. Um, But no, I mean, that was neat. I just, I thought that um, the animations were, were cool. 
Um, that was kind of neat. So I thought that was kind of impressive. But yeah, good to see some of those stories about, you know, and 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 look at scenarios that have been similar to this, right? And um, how close we've actually been. I think if the public knew more, because a lot of that information they get out on those close call events that could have led to uh, to nuclear warfare, um, people would have been very, very scary and probably want more accountability or more preventative measures to make sure that like a mistake can't lead to this because the whole mutually assured destruction idea is there's so many nukes that you can't stop an enemy and if one uses them the other uses them and there's an it's it's no way to stop it and you know in its worst case scenario and even in a, even in a likely scenario could lead to the destruction of the planet it's scary to think about but anyway um so i did have a few questions again i want you guys to know what do you think about the idea that nukes are making the world safer is the existence of them is it more likely you think that because of the existence of them the massive existence that they are more likely to be used than not are they keeping the world safer let me know down below and respond to each other all right with that again we'll see y'all later bye